All right, so let's go ahead and fly in the uh, parts again, and we'll pick up the uh, the arm. So it's pretty much a knob round with two holes in it, so this will go fairly quick. So we're bringing in a new new part. Oh, that was a, a rotator or something. <laughs> If um, if you're just working, you haven't created any templates, and you're just using the part, one of the things we'll want to check is that your default part is in millimeters, grams, and seconds. And again, if you uh, started the sketch before you realized, uh, when you make that change, it's going to kick you out of the sketch, and you're going to have to right-click and edit the sketch or select the sketch geometry and come back up to create the uh, get back in and edit the sketch. So um, I would like this to be in the top plane. I'm thinking ahead to the orientation within the assembly, make it a little easier. And under the ob round, and they're just calling it a slot, but pretty much it's going to have the, the same net effect on the geometry. And we're given a center to center distance, but I would like the, uh, the center to be located at the origin. So when I pick the first point, it's going to kind of drag out from the mid. And I think we had 55, so I'll kind of watch those numbers and get it close. When I pick to place the uh, the center and then drag out, once I click again, that's going to create the um, uh, the size of the eyebrow. Right click and smart dimension. We have that nice center line, and apparently that was the um, the half dimension. So when I pick it, it's going to um, uh, come back to our, our geometry. Um, let's see, we have a uh, diameter of 16 on one end, diameter of 12 on the other, and I don't see an overall. So, there again, I may be, uh, I may be missing something on the, uh, the ob round, but when I look at this, uh, if that's 16, yeah, we could probably say, oh, there we go, radius of 12 at both ends. So part of the um, uh, the challenge of the isometric is attention to detail and looking through the noise and the chaos of these uh, uh, and, and getting into that habit of um, of uh, really analyzing the uh, the drawings. So radius of 12 would give us a diameter of 24. It just if we need it, right? So since I'm picking an arc, it goes into the radius and gives us our geometry. So choices, if we were going to make one of these threaded at some point, I would want to use the hole wizard. If my, uh, you know, my magic crystal ball of design intent says that, um, you know, this is always going to be a clearance hole, and even though they're the same, or they're different sizes, I will um, uh, treat them as if they're the, the same in this uh, this one sketch, so... Uh, let's go with a diameter of 12, and since we're picking on the circle, we get the diameter. The other end is the diameter of 16. And so that's going to be kind of loose in, in that, uh, that geometry. And also the up and down movement is going to be pretty, uh, pretty loose. So habit I have is to go back to the command manager. If I right click, and well, those were the sketch tools. I was looking to see if I could jump out. All right, so S key takes me into more tools. Let's go to the um, exit sketch. And as long as the sketch is still highlighted, I should be able to hit the S key. So I'm trying to work through the logic of, of where I would use the S key on this. Once I've uh, exited the sketch, I don't know, I guess that's maybe my, uh, my workflow um, you know, hesitation is that I can come up here, click once rather than exiting the sketch and then going to the S key, so I don't, I'll have to see if I can add the extrude to the, um, the S key in one of our customizations. So this is, um, this is set to 10 millimeters, and that creates the, um, the arm. So control seven, and we'll save, go into the arm, all right, so under the window, I can see the uh, the two open parts. If this gets much more than about, I want to say I've been opening uh, in in different conversions and different assemblies uh, that I've been working in. If I have between like 15 and 20 parts open, 
I'm going to start to overrun the uh, the resources, and SolidWorks is going to going to start uh, giving me warnings. So, and that's with um, you know about 16 uh, gig of RAM. So, yeah, you got to kind of uh, watch if this is uh, going to accumulate a lot of parts. We'll close some of these out and come back to them later. And so, there's different uh, different ways of uh, of addressing your uh, your geometry and managing your parts. So new, I'll jump back into the uh, the metric, and we're going to create one of the uh, the screws. And because this is um, a similar geometry, we have an M12 and an M10. Let's look at this from a configuration standpoint. So be aware that. Um, if you want to build these as separate items, uh, go ahead. They're not. Um, uh, it, it, you don't have to do this as configurations. The technique is going to work. There's going to be a cutoff point where we really don't have to, um, you know, continue with the configuration. You can save and then do a save as, or just open up a new part and start again. All right. So in the sketch, I want to do a revolve, and the revolve doesn't. Um, doesn't necessarily help me or hurt me with these two. Let's make sure I flew this in. So they're 10 millimeters round, and um, and then with a 12, we have the uh, the 14 millimeter on the uh, the end. So this one's going to be fairly static. This one's going to have some uh, some different sizes, and they don't really show the step very well there. But we're gonna we're gonna see what we have to uh, to contend with if I um, if I build this out. So that one little step makes this kind of not a very good choice to go with configuration. So I'll throw that warning out out there that we're going to have to um, uh, have to deal with it uh, a little later on. All right, so center line, vertical. Whenever I do a revolve, I'm thinking infinite length center line placed at the origin, and that's going to bring out my geometry. And this one can just go to the step. Actually, I could have drew, drawn a rectangle. I was thinking about if I had to do those uh, those steps. But let's go back into our dimension. And the first one is going to be for 10 millimeter. And its overall length is 42. And since I was still in, all right, I need to hit escape to get out of the diametral. And that creates my geometry for the uh, for the base. If I wanted to put in the uh, the chamfer, we have an M2 on this one, an M3 on the other one. You know, so I'm I'm kind of uh, justifying as I go is if this configuration is going to be a good idea. And the more I do it, it's not going to be a good idea. So I'm going to recommend that you go ahead and create these as separate parts. But I want to illustrate the uh, the process. So uh, let's go ahead into the features. Let's try that one more time with uh, the S key, and I'm not seeing it there. So if I were to right-click and customize, I get that S key, and in my sketch tools, if I were to come down to the features and find the extrude boss base and drop it at the bottom, and the revolve boss base and drop it at the bottom, and then hit OK. Now I've added that to the uh, to the group. So let's move this over a little bit. And it's not really letting me. I thought I could resize it. So I'm just going to work my way up here a little bit, and we'll pick the revolve. And that worked worked OK. So I'm I'm good with that. And it's 360 degrees. Now to put a cosmetic thread, we'll come back to the, um, the 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 cut threads or the swept threads to uh, to put in the uh, the cosmetic thread. Let's see if we have any of that in our um, in our right context. And since we don't, I've probably added it somewhere to my uh, tool list. But I am looking to insert an annotation and make a cosmetic thread. Right, so I see my cosmetic thread up here, which means that I right-clicked, customized, typed in cosmetic thread, drug it into the heads-up display, and then there we go. So it's going to always be attached to an edge, and this is an ANSI metric. 
M10, they don't give us a call out. And I think I made that an M10 by 1.25, so memory test. What did I do five minutes ago on the, uh, the C bracket? <laughs> and the um, diameter comes out okay. Uh, we need, actually need a length. I don't want to go the full length. Uh, it's showing at 15 millimeters, so blind in condition and 15 millimeters. Let's go ahead and accept that. All right, so if I had added the chamfer first, I would be picking the outside edge of the chamfer, which I don't think is uh, is really that big of a deal. I've done that on uh, on occasion, and so this is going to be a two millimeter chamfer by 45 degrees, so that's okay, and that just adjusts the um, the cosmetic thread into the um, into the um, into the geometry. So let's save this as our um, our adjustment screw. And one's going to be the um, well. Let's just all right. So I got to think through what I'm going to what I'm going to do for this geometry. My default. And I like to leave the default as a kind of a catch-all. If I make make a mistake or have to uh, to chase this back, I can go back to the default in a lot of cases. If I have the um, the standard um, you know standard geometry, my common elements to uh, to work back from. So we're just going to call this the uh, the adjustment screw. And I want this to show up in the bill of materials as the configuration name. And then we'll go ahead and accept. All right, so to take this to the next step, I had the configuration for the pivot screw. And it's also going to be attached to the configuration name. All right, so I got to think about how I'm going to uh, to adjust this. So if we had, ex you know, if we have Excel in our system, we, you know, tendency would be right to go into the design table. And since um, not everybody's going to have Excel, let's go ahead and drive some of this geometry. So on the, um, the sketch, let's make sure it's in here. Configure feature. All right, so the configuration that I'm driving, and I want to double click to get into those dimensions. All right, so the pivot screw comes up, and if I double click, there's D1. This would be a, a place where we'd also want to look at um, uh, being able to uh, to drive that uh, that geometry uh, with um, with actual names of instead of the um, the D1 D2. So for the pivot screw, this dimension goes to 12, and the overall length goes to 75. And then let's see uh, if we apply that. Then it grows, gets a little bigger, and notice our cosmetic thread. I don't know that I can um, I can configure. Well, let's see if we can configure the cosmetic thread. No, didn't really didn't really work out. So what I want to do is suppress. So configurations are going to manage physical geometry and suppression states, and we'll take a look at the display states here in a little bit. All right. So um, I mentioned uh, the chamfer is already there for this uh, this geometry we configure the feature and if I double click I'm gonna see 45 degrees is correct correct D1 at the uh, the chamfer for the pivot screw goes up to 3 and hit enter and OK so that looks quite a bit bigger but all right all right so since we um, we suppress the cosmetic thread Going to select the edge, insert, annotation, cosmetic thread. Well, while we're here, if we're going to do enough cosmetic threads, this may be the point where we say, let's go ahead and customize. And we will uh, come over to the commands. And I'm looking for the annotations. All right, so part of the, the problem with 
with doing the customize is that um, finding some of these items and one of these had a uh, had a search in it so finding it if it's a little more difficult we come back over notes There we go, cosmetic thread. All right, so the other e maybe easier way would be to come up to the search command and type in cosmetic thread, and then I can drag it to wherever, usually uh, onto the command manager. All right, if I'm in the S key, we could also customize this for the uh, for the S key by right-clicking, customizing. We're looking at our annotations. Don't know why I prefer the, the commands list. Well, I guess we're going to have to use to modify the um, to modify the S key. So annotation, and I can drag that and hit OK. Now we can go directly into the cosmetic thread. All right, so I have it on my heads-up display from the commands. I have it on my S key from the um, uh, from the shortcuts. All right, so NC metric M12 by 1.75, and its overall is going to be 20 millimeters. And we go ahead and hit OK. All right, so the check, if I go over the configurations, is to click on the adjustment screw. It switches the suppression state of Cosmetic Thread 1 and Cosmetic Thread 2, and the chamfer from 2 to 3, and our dimensions from 10 to um, 10 to 12. All right, so this is where it might get a little weird. Um, thinking about how I want to add that geometry, I could do a revolve. Um, we need pretty much need the uh, the M14 don't know that it's going to terminate right at the uh, the thread but since it's 20 yeah, pretty much it's going to have to uh, to terminate right there so since there's no relief and really looking at going to uh, to lock that down I could draw the uh, 14 millimeters and extrude it but then I'm having to do math or do the offset so I think another revolve is uh, is probably in order. Okay, so we'll just use the existing geometry midpoint. And since I did not create a center line here, the difference between having that center line and not is that I'm going to give it what would be my radial dimension seven. Uh, need to go to from the end up to 20 and since again I don't have the center line let's see if I can build that S key and we're going to pick that as the axis of revolution so we can use an object line but if you have that center line then it puts you into that uh, mindset you're already thinking this is the uh, the geometry that I want and it automatically picks it all right, so if I go to Control-8 or to Control-5 for the top, I can open up my next sketch. All right, so right-click on the, um, and the second row is the Edit Sketch, or you can always come back up to the, uh, the Command Manager. And I'm going to go with a center rectangle here. And this is 9 millimeters square. And it doesn't quite come to the points. So it's not going to um, knock those off. I did a select, control, select. So select the line, hold down the control button, select the other line. Those are going to be equal. All right, so how does that rectangle help me when well, I didn't add a uh, cut extrude? <laughs> so I'm still back up the command manager, and we're going to do the extruded cut. And this is going to go 15 millimeters. And the very next box the very next box is to flip side to cut so the yellow is what's going to be removed and when I flip the side to cut it's going to take the material off of the outside all right so it's a little sharp but let's go ahead and save 
and I think we're um, we're pretty good. One more check. The default you need to come back to it is going to be the same as the adjustment screw, and then the pivot screw. But that again gives me something to always come back to to start if I needed to make a different type uh, of um, uh, of screw for this assembly. Then I can um, I can add that geometry, build it out. But I don't know. Again, I don't know that this was the uh, the best, but it is a good exercise.